you guys can look through the monitor. Just don't uh, look, but don't touch. Don't laugh. Here we go. Quiet, please. And that boom is definitely out, right? Yep. And action. Hey, Doctor. Uh, what's your name again? I take it you didn't follow me all the way here in the middle of the night just to verify my name, Travis. <laughs> You're very smart. Um, funny thing is, when they let you off on a mistrial, you could go wherever you want. You could anywhere. And I decided to right here, and uh, after a lot of thought, I decided to forgive you for testifying against me. You know, forgiveness is a really beautiful thing, and I'm just so sorry that an unrepentant murderer like you will never know what that's like. <sighs> because, you know, I used to think my religious beliefs and forensic psychology work would be at odds with each other, but the more I come into contact with sociopaths like you, mm. the more convinced I am that some people really do go to hell, which is exactly <laughs> where you will go, Travis. And... <laughs> You know, your, your victim's family will never forgive you, God will never forgive you, and I will never forgive you. Okay, if God is holding me in so much judgment, then you don't have to judge me that much, right? What is this? I mean, this is not really how you forgive a person, really. Um, but I get it. People don't throw around forgiveness the way they used to these days. So... You're maybe a little out of practice. What I'm really asking for is just maybe like a, like a thank you. Like a, <laughs> say it with me. Thank you. This is a really cute performance, you know, you being so magnanimous as to forgive me from your non-existent heart. But this right here is a case in point example of what I find the most disturbing about sociopaths like you, which is the fact that you guys not only have no shame and no remorse and no contrition but <laughs> at the end of the day you had no shame i mean coming here and sharing your false victory with me like this okay i'm gonna stop you there sociopath i came all this way to forgive you so that you could sleep at night does that sound like a sociopath to you well uh, you, you should have really spared yourself the time and the trouble because I'm going to sleep just fine knowing what every Psych 100 dropout knows, which is that any sociopath will always give in to that urge to oh. cause mayhem again. And I know you're a smart guy too, Travis. You won't actually murder someone again, but you, you know, you've already broken one commandment. You've already committed murder, so it's just a matter of time before you, you know, steal... Commit. So I want to I want to stop you there because uh, you did testify me uh, you did testify against me for murder, which means sociopath. You think I'm a psychopath? That's psych 101 for you. No, my friend. Someone as intelligent as you would be a sociopath. If you oh. were a psychopath, you would have tried to kill me right here and now. So. <laughs> Is that so? Yes, it is so, and I'll look forward to seeing you relapse and wind oh. up in the can once again. And I look forward to earning your thanks one day. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Wild sound siren. siren to bleed over to his cut if you need to. So I got the wild sound on it. You got plenty of that wild sound. It's better to use the actual siren than to go find it in the library. Okay. Here we go. Check one, two, three. Doctor, uh, what's your name again? Well, I take it you didn't trail me all the way here in the middle of the night just to verify my name, Travis. 
<laughs> Very smart. Uh, funny thing is, when they let you off on a mistrial, you just get to wherever you want to go. <laughs> and I decided to right here. I wanted to tell you that uh, after some thought, I've decided to forgive you for testifying against me. And forgiveness is a really beautiful thing, Travis. I'm just very sad that an unrepentant murderer like you will never get to experience something so beautiful. You know, I used to think there would be a discrepancy between my religious beliefs and my work as a forensic psychologist, but the more I come into contact with sociopaths like you, the more deeply convinced I am that some people really do go to hell, and you're going to be one such person, Travis. Y you know, your victim's family will never forgive you for what you did, and God will never forgive you for what you did. So it's fine and dandy that you walked away from the justice systems of this world, but you will not escape the wrath of God, I can assure you. If God is judging me so harshly, then you don't have to, right? <laughs> so I, I get it. This is not how most people normally accept you know, forgiveness. I don't blame you. People don't forgive like they used to these days. But uh, I guess all I'm looking for here is a little thanks. Just, uh, come on, say the words. This is such a cutesy performance. You trying to forgive me from the bottom of your non-existent heart, Travis. But this is actually a case in point of why sociopaths like you are the most disturbing type of individuals on this planet because not only do you guys have a total lack of remorse and contrition and guilt, but you also have a fundamental lack of shame, as you've illustrated by coming here and sharing your hollow victory with me, like this. Well, sociopath, that's a, that's a funny one, that's a good one. Uh, I'm not a sociopath. I came all this way just to tell you that I forgive you just so you could sleep at night. Does oh. that sound like a sociopath? I'm going to sleep just fine because I'm going to give you a Psych 100 lesson. A sociopath is very, very intelligent and a psychopath would have tried to kill me on the spot right now. And what's going to help me sleep at night is knowing that as intelligent as you are, you're not going to be able to resist that urge to commit another crime. You know, to break one more commandment, you've already murdered someone, so I don't know, you still have theft, false witness, grand larceny, embezzlement, any one of those white collar crimes I'm sure you're very eager to commit. So it's only a matter of time before the police haul you back into the can and I'll just sleep very soundly dreaming of that day when I'm called back into court to, to testify against you once again. And I can't wait to get you to say thanks. And I can't wait to give my expert witness testimony once again and see you behind bars for good the next time you slip up. Hi, Doctor Whatever. Good night, sociopath. <laughs> yeah, good job, guys. Good. A lot of interesting stuff in there. Tons of days of interesting stuff in there. Yeah. Is that out of the frame? Yeah, you get it. Okay. Here we go. And action. All I'm saying is, you definitely deserve that promotion. Oh. No, oh, that's all you, man. I mean, your work ethic, you're always sweating. You're the last guy to leave the firm. Sweaty or not, you're always the most effective. You got that stuff down to a T. <sighs> but it's the way you talk to people, okay? I mean, you, you close every deal with every client. The only reason I'm so good is because I'm mimicking you. You got this charm, this charisma that, I swear, it's energetic. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Maybe I, I, I do deserve this. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm just putting it all together, like the promotion and everything, everything that you're saying, I, I think I'm the right guy for it, you know? Sure. You know, it's like you're 99.9% .9 and I'm at like 99.89. It's the littlest bit. Right, right, right. But that 1%, you know, that's kind of a 
big decider here. I mean, it's more of like 0.01%, but who's counting? What, may, what makes you think that there's such a big difference, though? Um, I don't know. How about we try when you took the boss's keys from his desk, the drunk driving incident, you crashed a car into the side of the office, you blamed it on that bum, he was just laughing. Yeah, well, he deserved it. He shouldn't have been laughing. Deserved what? Felony time. <laughs> okay. How about the incident, then? What incident? You know. You said you wouldn't bring that up. Well, now I am. You cheated on the bar exam. You're technically not a lawyer. Fogoro Chao, you're paying. Okay. Those levels bouncing on that audio meter. See it bounce up like docks? Yeah. Cool. Alright, here we go. It says record on this way. Right? Uh, you get cool. Sometimes it shuts off. Here we go. And action. All I'm saying? Yeah. All I'm saying? You definitely deserve a promotion. Oh, come on. That's all you. Your work ethic, you're always sweating. You're the last guy to leave the office. Sweaty or not. You're the most effective guy I know. You got everything down to a T. Okay, all right. But it's the way you talk to people. You know, the way you handle your clients. I mean, you close every deal. Yeah, but that's only because I got the, I'm, I'm trying to match your charisma. You got this extra energetic magnetism to you. You're right. Maybe I am the guy for the job. Right. No, I, I'm just, putting it together, you know, maybe I'm the best for the promotion. Yeah, you know, you're like the 99.9% .9 and I'm right there with you with 99.89. Right. But it's that 1%, you know, that really separates us. I mean, it's more of like a 0.01%, but who's counting? What's the big factor, you think? <sighs> okay, how about we start with the boss's car keys? You know, you, you stole him from his desk. You crashed his car into the side of the building. You blamed it on that bum. He was just laughing. Yeah, well, he deserved it. He should have been laughing. He deserved what? The, the jail time. Okay. How about the incident? What incident? You know. You said you weren't talking about that. You cheated on the bar exam. Your technically technically not a lawyer. All right, Fogoro Chao, you're paying. Okay. Good, good. Well, <laughs> you kept tapping me in the No, I know, no, 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 I know, I know. I, I looked over and I was like, oh shit, I didn't come on. What the fuck am I going It wasn't even but like a nut tap, but it was like a caress. <laughs> Oh, shit. I'm just sitting there like, no. this is, um, no, okay, shit. just go. No, this is, no, he said something funny, so I started laughing. <laughs> I was laughing, and I looked away because I didn't want to make a sound, and then I looked over and I go, oh, shit, I'm nut tapping Mo with the microphone. Oh, fuck. It's like microphone's right fucking soiled now. All right, well, oh, no. I'm just, I'm just going to pretend like that. Exactly. You'd never do it otherwise. Here we go. And... Action. All I'm saying is, you definitely deserve that promotion. Oh, come on. It's all you, man. I mean, your work ethic, you're always sweating, you're the last guy to leave the office. Sweaty or not, you always end up having the most effective timeline. It's crazy. You got everything down to a T. Okay, but how about the way you talk to people? I mean, you close every deal, every client. Yeah, that's just because I'm trying to match your charisma. You're just energetic, like so magnetic. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Maybe I am the guy for the job, huh? Yeah. No, I, I, I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm putting it all together here, all the things you're telling me. I mean, I think I could handle the responsibility. Sure, I mean, like, you're like 99.9% .9 and I'm 99.89%. Right. You know, just a little bit there. Yeah, but, you know, it's that 1% that really separates us. I mean, it's like... 0.01%, but who's really counting? What do you think that big dividing factor is? Okay, um, 
How about when you stole the boss's keys from his desk, took his car, crashed the car into the side of the building, you blamed it on that bum? He was just laughing. He deserved it. Deserved what? He shouldn't have been laughing, so he got felony time. Okay. How about the incident? You said you weren't talking about that. I'm talking about it now. You cheated on the bar exam. You're technically not a lawyer. Fogo to Chow, you're paying. Okay. Okay, good. Let's take it again. Here we go. And. Action. All I'm saying, you definitely deserve that promotion. Come on, that's all you. Your work ethic, I mean, you're always sweating. You're the last guy to leave the office. Sweaty or not, you're the, always the most effective person. You got everything down to a T. Okay. How about the way you talk to people, huh? You close every deal, every new client. Yeah, that's just because I'm trying to match your charisma. You're just so influential. Huh. Maybe you're right. Maybe yeah. I am the guy. Yeah. Maybe I am the guy for the job. Sure. You know, you're like 99.9% .9 and I'm right back there with you at 99.89. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that 1% that is kind of the big divider here. I mean, it's more of like a 0.01%, but who's counting? What do you think that big dividing factor is? Okay, how about um, when you stole the boss's keys? from his desk, crashed the car into the side of the building. I mean, you blamed it on that bum. He was just laughing. Well, you know what? He deserved it. He shouldn't have been laughing. Deserved what? The felony time. Jail. <sighs> okay. How about the incident? What incident? You know the incident. You said you wouldn't talk about that. Well, I'm talking about it now. You cheated on the bar exam. You're technically not a lawyer. Zanku Chicken, you're paying. Okay. <laughs> I'll use Zanku Chicken instead because that's like a real cheap move to be like, I'm not. G Here we go. I know of a place. What kind of place are you talking about? It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods. A place that you're longing for, but almost forgot. A place that fills you with warmth. Such an incredible warmth. Like fingertips all over your skin. It feels so good to surrender. That sounds wonderful. But I'm happy here. I have a good job. A comfortable apartment. Happy? I think you're lonely, that you wake up at night aching to be led there. I know the feeling, but you don't have to feel alone anymore. I don't seem like someone who's lost their dream. Someone who would sacrifice love on the altar of ambition. I can't even imagine you having a nightmare, let alone. Would you like to live exquisitely, Mr. Collins?
What? What should I do? I'll do it. Hold on. Do it. Change from the last one. Don't, don't change it. Don't change it. Don't change You're it. You're good. Was it, was it the same as it was before? I know the place. What kind of place are you talking about? It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods. A place that you're longing for, but almost forgot. A place that fills you with warmth. Such an incredible warmth and a sweet anticipation like fingertips all over your skin. It feels so good to surrender. That sounds wonderful. But I'm happy here. Have a good job, a comfortable apartment. Happy. I think you're lonely. I think you wake up at night, aching to be led there. I know the feeling that you don't have to feel alone anymore. You seem like someone who's lost their dream, who would sacrifice love on the altar of ambition. I can barely imagine you having a nightmare, let alone. Would you like to live exquisitely, Mr. Collins? Check one, check two, check one, check two. place are you talking about? It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods, a place that fills you with warmth, such an incredible warmth, and a sweet anticipation, like fingertips all over your skin. It feels so good to surrender. It sounds wonderful, but I'm happy here. It's a Gulfstream 6. It's the only private jet out of Van Nuys that has that much kick. Here we go. Everybody's closed. Yeah. Those Gulf Street motherfuckers can do whatever they want. Scary V. Here we go. What kind of place are you talking about? It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods, a place you are longing for but almost forgot, a place that fills you with warmth. Such an incredible warmth and a sweet anticipation. 
like fingertips all over your skin. This one's so damn freaking delicate. Do you guys want to switch out? Since we got, you guys are talking so soft with that air conditioning going. That's going to step on you guys. Check one, check two, check one, check two. Check! Why? Why did you do that to me? You took everything that I ever loved and you just squandered them like that. You think you can shit all over my life? Well, fuck you. Fuck you forever. So how's that? Well, um, it's a lot to unravel, but I think I was definitely right. What do you mean? What do I mean? I told you on the ride, ride over here that we should not be practicing our scene in a coffee shop. People will look. Oh my god, can we move on already? Yeah, we can move on as long as you say we will never practice our scene in a coffee shop. Okay, I hear you. For fuck's sake. I mean, people come here to write shitty scripts, not practice them. And they were looking at us. We're in theater. We're in a business where people watch us all day? That's different. Well, what do you want me to say? I'm sorry, okay? Okay, we're not coming back to a coffee shop to run our, our lines. Okay, perfect, fine. It's settled. <sighs> and I thought you did good. Just one or two things. What? Well, the fuck you forever part. Well, how do you want me to say it? Like, fuck you or fuck you. Which one do you want? Maybe you should just try both. And you do know that this is a comedy, right? What? <sighs> you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you forever. Good, good. Take it again. You got your first take out too, by the way. Just relax a little. Don't move your feet. Just relax a little. So you still like your focus on Yeah. All right. Here we go. The boobs out. And action. Why? Why did you do that to me? You literally took everything that I love and you just squandered them like that. You think you could just shit all over my life? Well, fuck you. Fuck you forever. So how's that? Well, it's a lot to unravel, but I definitely think I was right. What do you mean? What do I mean? I told you on the drive over here that we should not be practicing our scene in a coffee shop. Oh my god, can we move on already? But people are looking at us. Well, we're in a business of people watching us all day. That is completely different. Well, what do you want me to say? I'm sorry, okay? Okay, fine, it's settled. And I thought you did really good. Just maybe one or two things. What? Well, the fuck you forever part. What about it? How do you want me to say it? Like, fuck you or fuck you? I think you should just try both. And you do know that this is a comedy, right? What? You know what? Fuck you. Fuck you forever. Good, good job. Hold on, everyone stay real quiet. Wild sound, air conditioner. Have that air conditioner nice and quiet, everybody. Is that out? Max, is that out? Uh, yes. Here we go. And action. I got cut. 
no warning, no explanation, nothing. It, it just sucks when everything you work for gets stripped away just like that. I understand your frustration because of how much you wanted that job. But given your talent. Do me a favor. I'm going to have you guys jump out for one second because I'm going to wait for this air to go off. I finished one other one that didn't have it. Uh, nice and quiet, everybody. Pictures up. And check one, check two. And very quiet, please. That's out. Here we go. And action. I got cut. No warning, no explanation, nothing. It, it just sucks when everything you work for gets stripped away just like that. I understand your frustration because of how much you wanted that part. But given your talent, why not consider it a challenge to insist and show them how well you can do it? After all, you're still in the company. I guess you're right. It's just that they're so dense and it's really hard to tell them anything and I just want to scream, I don't need you. But I guess I could try. That's the spirit. There are many cases of artists who got the chance to perform again and impress despite initial perceptions. And I think you can do it. Yeah, you're right. I guess all I really have to do is just work even harder to get my spot back and show them that I deserve it. Thanks. You know, I'm just so glad that I met you and that we get to commute together quite regularly. Particularly because when looking at the two of us, you and I are hardly the pair that people would consider can relate to each other. But that's how it should be, right? I got cut. No warning, no explanation, nothing. And it just sucks when everything you work for gets stripped away just like that. Bye, Miami. I understand your frustration. How much you want to take that? Why not consider it? After all, you're still in. I guess you're right. It's just that they're so dense, and it's really hard to tell them anything. And I just want to scream, I don't need you. But. I guess I could try. That's this case. There are many cases of artists who get a chance to You can do it. Yeah, you're right. So long. To do is work even harder to and show them why I deserve it. Thanks. You know. I'm so happy to have met you and that we can travel together quite regularly. I have, however, because it's... I'll quick take that line back that's uh, Carlos's cue where you, you guess you deserve it and you got your spot. And don't, don't, you did it a little goobery. Don't try to be goobery like you think we're, you know, don't be who you think don't, don't be who you think we need you to be. You know what I mean? Sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Here we go. I'll take that one more time just to, from that speech. And action. Yeah. I guess all I really have to do is just work even harder to get my spot back and show them that I deserve it. Thanks. I'll take that even just one more time. Just get down and just, just say it. You're kind of going into like... Everybody will be okay with me, and I'm not going to freak them out. Just, just do you on that line. It just felt a little false. One more time. Yeah. I guess all I really have to do is work even harder to get my spot back and show them that I deserve it. Thanks.
you know, I'm just so glad that I met you and that we get to commute together kind of regularly, particularly because when looking at the two of us, you and I are hardly a pair that most people would consider can even relate to each other. But that's the way it should be, right? Good, good, good. Better. That'll come along. You're, you, you did better. Good, good. I jump out, guys. Uh, James, jump in real quick. Yeah. Nice quiet, everybody. Check one, check two, check one, check two, check. That's out, right? Yes. And action. I know the place. What kind of place are you talking about? It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods. A place you are longing for, but almost forgot. A place that fills you with warmth, such an incredible warmth, and a sweet anticipation, like fingertips all over your skin. It feels so good to surrender. It sounds wonderful, but I'm happy here. I have a good job, comfortable apartment. Happy. I think you're lonely. That you wake up at night, aching to be left there. I know the feeling. You don't have to feel alone anymore. don't seem like the kind of person who's lost their dream, who would sacrifice love on the altar of ambition. I can't even imagine you having a nightmare, let alone. Would you like to live exquisitely, Mr. Collins? Place. What kind of place are you talking about? It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods. A place you are longing for but almost forgot. A place that fills you with warmth. Such an incredible warmth. In a sweet anticipation, like fingertips all over your skin. It feels so good to surrender. I will say the cigarette in that looks fucking awesome. Check, check, check. And that's all right. And action. Why are you being so heartless? Why don't you care? Why can't you help her and take care of her? I'm going to talk about me being heartless. You're the one being selfish over here. You can afford to take care of her. You have a husband, you have a six-figure salary, and then you expect me, to, the one living by myself after just graduating college, who can barely take care of myself? You know it's not about the money. And you know I'm not here all the time physically. And she loves you more, you know that. And she needs you to be there for her. It's her last days. You have to be there for her. 
What about the emotional aspect that I had to go through when I was in high school and all the shit she put me through? You want me to have to go through that again after I just finally started healing from that? You know she gave you the, lo the love, the best. You know she gave you the love, the best she could. And the healing you went through, this is a perfect time to heal, accept and love. You don't even know, do you? You don't know that the reason dad offed herself, the reason dad offed himself is because she fucking cheated on him. There's so many things you can forgive someone for. That's just not it. No, I do not know that. But she of never gave up didn't. on you. She loved you. Do you really want her to end up in a nursing home? Yeah. Why are you being so heartless? Why can't you just help her and be there for her? Why can't you help her and be there for her? You have a husband to support you. You have a six-figure salary. I just graduated from college and can barely support myself. How do you expect me to add her to the, to the process? You do know it's not about the money. And you do know that I'm not physically here all the time to be there with her. She loves you more. You know that. She needs you there to be physically for her last days. I'm not there to be there emotionally for her. You, should, you of all people should know the shit that she put me through when I was in middle school. And now you expect me to welcome that back into my life? I think this is a perfect time for both of you guys to heal, to love, and to accept each other. You don't even know, do you? Do you know, did she ever tell you the reason dad offed himself? It's because she fucking cheated on him. No, I don't know that. But she never gave up on you. She always loved you. She gave you the best love she could give you. Do you really want her to end up in the nursing home? Yes. Yes, I do. Check one. Check. Check. Okay, here we go. And action. I know of a place. What kind of place are you talking about? It's a beautiful place. Deep in the woods. A place you were longing for, but almost forgot. A place that fills you with warmth. Such an incredible warmth. And a sweet and, and a sweet anticipation. Like fingertips all over your skin. It feels so good to surrender. Sounds wonderful, but I'm happy here. I have a good job, comfortable apartment. Happy. I think you're lonely, that you wake up at night aching to be left there. I know the feeling, but you don't have to feel alone anymore. You don't seem like someone who's lost their dream. Someone who would sacrifice love on the altar of ambition. I can barely imagine you having a nightmare, let alone. Would you like to live exquisitely, Mr. Collins? I know of a place.
kind of place you're talking about? It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods. A place you are longing for. It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods. A place you are longing for, but almost forgot. A place that fills you with warmth. Such an incredible warmth. And a sweet anticipation, like fingertips all over your skin. It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods, a place you are longing for but almost forgot, a place that fills you with warmth, such an incredible warmth, and a sweet anticipation, like fingertips all over your skin. It feels so good to surrender. It sounds wonderful. But I'm happy here. I have a good job, comfortable apartment. Happy. Oh shit, the air conditioner's bad. Her old pal. Okay, <laughs> jump. Here we go. Check. Why? Why did you do that to me? You took everything that I loved and you just wandered them like that. You think you can shit all over my life? Well, fuck you. Fuck you forever. So how's that? Well, there's a lot to untangle. But I'd first like to say I was definitely right. What do you mean? What do I mean? I told you on the drive here that we shouldn't be practicing our scene in a coffee shop. People would stare. Oh my god, move on already. I will move on when you say that we will never practice in a coffee shop again. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Can we move on? Yeah, it's settled. There's just one or two things about your scene. What? The fuck you forever part. I don't think you should say it. Well, how do you want me to say it? Like, fuck you or fuck you forever? We'll, we'll try both ways. But you do know that this is a comedy, right? What? When were you gonna plan of telling me that? You know what? Fuck you. Fuck you forever. Good, good. We missed the line. It's okay. Get Sorry. this take. Here we go. And hold for helicopter. It's unloading. He'll be okay. That, yeah, that's not going to be bad. Here we go. And very quiet, please. And action. Why? Why did you do that to me? You took everything that I loved, and you just squandered them like that. You think you can shit all over my life? Well, fuck you. Fuck you forever. So how's that? Well, it's a lot to unravel, but I was definitely right. What do you mean? What do I mean? I told you on the drive here that we should not be practicing our scene in a coffee shop. People will stare at us. Oh my god, can we move on already? We can move on as long as you say that we will never practice at a coffee shop again. Okay, I hear you, for I mean, fuck's sake. People are looking at us. We're in theater. We're in a business of people watching us all the time. That is completely different. What do you want me to say? I'm sorry, okay? Okay, it's settled. You were great. There's just one or two things. What? Well, the fuck you forever part? How do you want me to say it? Like, 
fuck you or fuck you. We'll try both ways. But you do know that this is a comedy, right? What? When were you planning on telling me that? You know what? Fuck you. Fuck you forever. Good, good. You guys are wrapped. Carlos jumping in. I think Carlos, you guys are on deck next. Good work, guys. Why are you being so heartless? Why can't you take care of her? Why can't you take care of her? You have a husband to support you. You have a six-figure salary. And you expect me, the recent college dropout, to take our mom in with me when I can barely support myself? You know it's not about the money. It's about physically being for her there for her last days that she's gonna be here and you know i'm not here all the time you know it's not about the money it's about physically being there for her and she needs you you know she loves you she needs you there i can't be there for her i'm traveling all the time I'm not physically here. I can't emotionally be there for her. Especially after all the shit she put me through when I was in high school. Do you, you of all people should know what I had to go through in order to get over that. Two years of therapy, and now you, what, you just want me to throw that all away? I think it's the best time for you both to heal. For you to be there for her and accept and love her. And for her to actually be there for you as well. You don't even know, do you? She never told you the reason Dad offed himself? It's because she fucking cheated on him. She didn't tell you that, did she? No, no she didn't. She did. No, she didn't. But she never bailed out on you. Do you really want her to be in the nursing home? Yes. Yes, I do. Taking over the top. And action. Why are you being so heartless? Why can't you just be there for her? Why can't you? You're the one that has a husband, a six figure salary, and the support system in order to take care of her. I just dropped out from college. You expect me to take her on in my life as well when I can barely support myself? You know it's not about the money. You know that she needs you there. She loves you. She needs you physically to be there. I can't do that for her. I'm not here all the time. I can't be there emotionally because she took that away from me when I was in high school after all the shit she put me through. You of all people should know that I had to go through two years of therapy in order to get over that. And what, you just want me to throw that away? Well, if you went through therapy, I think this is the best time for you and her to heal, to be there, to love each other. You can only forgive someone so many times. She never told you, did she? The reason Dad offed himself is because she was fucking cheating on him. No, she never told me that. But I know one thing, she loved you and she never bailed out on you. Do you really want her to end up in nursing home? Yes. Yes, I do. It's a fucked up family, man. <laughs> Good. Good job, guys. Just missed the helicopter. All right. Carlos, jump on in. And... I got cut. No warning, no explanation, nothing. It just sucks when everything you worked hard for just gets stripped away like that. Bye, Miami. I understand your frustration because of how much you wanted that part. But given your talent, 
why not consider it a challenge to insist and show them how well you do? After all, you're still in the company. Monster, right? It's just that they're so dense and it's really hard to tell them I'm gonna scream, I don't need you. But I guess I could try. That's the spirit. There are many cases of artists that get a second chance to perform and impress, and despite initial perception, and despite initial perceptions, That's the spirit. So we'll take it again. That's the spirit. There are many cases of artists who get a chance to perform again and impress, despite initial perceptions. And they become the stars. And I think you can do it. Yeah. You're right. I guess all I really have to do is work even harder to get my spot back and show them that I deserve it. Thanks. You know, I'm so glad that I met you and that we get to commute together quite frequently. But because you and I are so different, We'll take that part again. You know, I'm so glad that I met you and that we get to travel together frequently. You know, I'm so glad that I met you and that we get to travel together quite frequently. Free oh, goodness. I I'm, I'm sorry about that. You'll get it on this next one. It's hold for the helicopter. You'll get that last speech. You're just not flowing into it because you didn't go from the top. There we go. Just the last line, right? Uh, take it from the top. You got top. one more take. And action. I got cut. No warning, no explanation. Nothing. It sucks when everything you worked so hard for just gets stripped away like that. Bye, Miami. I understand your frustration. So much that you wanted that part. But given your talent, why not consider it a challenge to insist and show them how well you can do it? After all, you're still in the company. I guess you're right. It's just that they're so dense and it's really hard to tell them anything and I just want to scream, I don't need you. But I guess I could try. That's the spirit. There are many cases of artists that get a second chance to perform and impress. And despite initial perceptions, they become the stars. And I think you can do it. Yeah, you're right. I guess all I really have to do is just work even harder and to get my spot back and show them that I deserve it. Thanks. You know, I'm so glad I got to know you and that we get to commute together quite frequently, particularly because when looking at the two of us, you and I are hardly a pair 
that most people would consider able to relate to each other. But that's the way it should be, right? Good, 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 good work, guys. Good work. Very charming. And very quiet, please. Action. Look, I'm just going to tell you this straight. This is very hard for me. But I can't imagine what it must be like for you. Um, your father's dying. The disease, it, it's just gone too far. There's nothing else we can do. Ever since I was young, that my father instilled in me to be a man. He was so harsh with me. One day, when I was late for school, my father came home. He was so mad. He decided to beat me. He beat me so hard. He beat me bloody. I told myself that day, I would never cry for him. But today I'm crying for him. Because it is my father. You only get one father. I know, I know. What do you know? You say I know, I know. What do you know? You and your cushy family and your cushy life. You don't know anything. You listen. I understand that you're going through... I can't even imagine what you're going through. But you just think I put on this white collar and I put on a brave face every day? That death doesn't haunt me? Do you know what I do? Not just for my patients that I care tremendously about, but my family as well. I want to be there for you. I care about you more than just any patient. You have to just trust me. I'm here to help you. Gotcha. Action. I'm just going to cut straight. I, uh, I don't really know how to tell you this. It's never easy. Uh, your father is dying. The disease, it's just, it's hit pretty hard. There's nothing else that we can do. I'm so sorry. Ever since I was younger, my father always instilled in me to be a man. He was so harsh with me. One day, when I was going to school, he came home and saw I was late. He was so mad. He decided to beat me. He beat me bloody. I decided that day, if he were to ever die, I would never cry. Today I'm crying <laughs> because it is my father. You only get one father. I know. I know. What do you know? You keep saying you know, you know, you know. What do you know? You live in your cushy life with your cushy family. Hey, hey, I know you're going through a really, I can't even imagine what you're going through. But you just think, you think that I just put on this collar every day, this white collar, and I just go on with a brave face? Why, why I've seen children die? Their parents mourning over their bodies? You don't think that I've seen and felt this? It may be hard for you to believe, but I understand what you're going through. And I want to help you, I do. But you've got to let me. You cannot go through this by yourself. 
Will you let me? Good. That was great, man. This is great. Now, you guys, when we spin it around and there's another air conditioning take, jump in on an air conditioning take. So, what you been up to? I've been in Europe for like two years. I'll tell you one more time from the top. Now you're not air conditioning people. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. And action. So, what have you been up to? I've been in Europe for like two years. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, everybody in town's following you. So, I mean, you've been so many places. Do you do you even still speak English? No. Hakuna Matata. Uh, okay. Um, well, I mean, are you just here for the holidays, or are you going back right after? Or? Actually, I'm, I'm here to stay. I don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. You know, I, I, I went to Europe trying to reinvent myself, start over, but I just found myself wanting to come back where I felt at home. It's here. But anyways, t t tell me about you. Hey. What's new? <laughs> I mean, not anything exciting. It's, you know, the job I was working, I just, it didn't feel right. So, you know, I wanted to go in a new direction. So I started my own company. Are you kidding? That's amazing. It's it's not as glamorous as it sounds. It's well, I mean, the most exciting thing is you know the new ice cream shop in town. They're one of my clients, so they they give me a whole bunch of ice cream every time I'm there, and I can never finish it. Mm. Don't laugh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I can help you finish the ice cream. I love ice cream. You hate ice cream. I forced myself to try every flavor in gelato, so it grew on me. Okay, so let's go have ice cream. Yeah. Okay. I'm free Friday after six. I, if you're gonna come, I was, I wanted to do it on Sunday, you know, cause I always go Sunday, Sunday. And I also do it at noon specifically when the sun is at its zenith. Mm. So, mm -hmm. you know, all the stars align. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, it's perfect. It makes total sense. How could we do it on any other day? Sunday, Sunday. Okay. 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 Action. So, um, uh, what have you been up to? I've been in Europe for like two years. Oh yeah, of, of course. Yeah, I mean, we're all we're all following you, and mm. um, you've been to so many places. Uh, do, do you still even speak English? No, Hakuna Matata. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Are uh, Are you gonna just stay here for the holidays, or are you are you going back to? Actually, I'm here to stay. Yeah, I don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. Well, I, I, I went to Europe trying to reinvent myself, uh, start life over, and then the whole time I just found myself wanting to be where I felt at home. Yeah, I was running from the police here. helicopters that were chasing me after I got back. I mean, that's so interesting. Hang tight. Let's pick it up right from that line. The witness has been slowing us down all night. It hasn't been the helicopter. It's been all so night. That's why everything should be a vlog. You have this one <laughs> falling around. You see the, the vlog about the helicopters in the swamp. And then you have the so much footage you could just say, that one, D Rock. <laughs> that one, D Rock. I need a D Rock. <laughs> D-Rock's got to be pricey. He's got to no, be good. Yeah. Well, unless, like, Gary Vee locked him into a contract in the beginning, and he's like, yeah, hey, D-Rock. Gary Vee's going to outbid you if you try to get D-Rock. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. And... You want to do it from yours? From your monologue? Um, can you lead me in? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Zero. And action. So are you just here for the holidays, or are you going back right after... 
actually, I'm here to stay. I don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. I went to Europe trying to reinvent myself, start life over, and the whole time I just found myself wanting to be where I felt at home. Here. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, not much has gone here either. I mean, I, the job I was working, it just didn't seem right, so I wanted to go into a new direction, so I decided to open my own company. Wow, that's amazing. It's not as glamorous as it sounds. Uh, I mean, the ice cream parlor in town, they're one of my clients, so, well, every time I go in there, they give me a whole bunch of ice cream and I can't finish it. It's a little embarrassing. Mm. Don't laugh. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, okay, I can help you finish the ice cream. You hate ice cream. I had to try every gelato flavor, so it grew on me, okay? I can help you finish the ice cream. Okay. I'm free Friday after six. I was kind of thinking Sunday. You know, if you're gonna come, it's it's Sunday, Sunday. Hmm. So, and the the sun has to be at its zenith, so I have to do it at twelve noon exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you coming or not? Yes, Sunday, Sunday. How could we do it on any other day? It's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Good, good, good job, guys. Okay, um, real quick, because we've been fighting this one all night. Where's yeah. Marion? We got to action. I know of a place. Harris Creek and Ford, a little bit, pull back just a little bit on the other side. There we go. We're still rolling, right? Yeah. Here we go. I'm sliding down in the air. Rolling. And action. I know of a place. What kind of place are you talking about? It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods. A place you're longing for, but almost forgot. A place that fills you with warmth. Such an incredible warmth. And a sweet anticipation. Like fingertips all over your skin. It feels so good to surrender. It sounds wonderful. But I'm happy here. Welcome back to the helicopter. Hold on. Quiet, everybody. <laughs> and. That right? yep. yeah. And action. I'm just gonna go right to this. I. Uh, really having a hard time explaining this, but. Um, your father. He's dying. The disease. It's just moving so rapidly. There's just nothing else that we can do. I'm so sorry. When I was younger, my father, he always instilled in me to be a man. He was so harsh on me. One day, when I was going to school, I was so late. He was so mad, so angry. He decided to beat me. He beat me bloody. I told myself, if my father ever died, I wouldn't cry. Today I cry for my father. Because you only get one father. I know. I'm sorry. 
What do you know? You say you know with your cushy life, and your cushy family, with your perfect mother and father, they come and tell you every day that they love you. My father didn't love me. Hold on. I just wanted to be a good son. You hold on. You listen to me. You think I wake up every morning and put on this white collar and put on a brave face for everybody, everything that I have seen. You have no idea what I have seen. The mourning I've seen from parents losing their children. Personal, personal death. I do know what this is like, as hard as that is for you to believe. I am here to help you. I just need you to trust me so that you can let me. Will you let me? Good, very quiet, please. Wild sound helicopter hovering. Very quiet, everybody. Helicopter hovering, air conditioning on. I'm just going to give this to you straight. This is going to be very difficult for you. And I'm sorry. Your father, um, he's dying. The disease is just so rapid. There's nothing more that we can do. And I'm so sorry. When I was younger, my father always instilled in me to be a man. He was so harsh on me. One day when I was going to school, he saw that I was late. He was so mad. He was so angry. He beat me bloody. He sent me to school and all the kids laughed at me. I told myself that day, I would never cry for my father if he died. But today I cry for my father. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know. I know. How do you know? You don't know anything. You think you know everything with your cushy life and your cushy family. Living your perfect life with your family telling you they love you every day. My father doesn't love me. You need to hold on, okay? Every morning I put on this uniform. And you think I just walk, I wake up in the morning and I put on a brave face for what I do? Take that speech you just gave her one more time. Don't worry about waking those people up. They can't hear anything with those air conditioners. If they can sleep through that, they can sleep through anything. All right. So don't be afraid to wake them up with that <sighs> speech. Really give that to her. Okay, Here go we ahead. go. And action. What do you know? You're what do you know? Just wait for that beeping to stop. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on.
check. And action. I know of a place. What kind of place are you talking about? It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods. A place you are longing for, but almost forgot. A place that fills you with warmth. Such an incredible warmth and a sweet anticipation, like fingertips all over your skin. It feels so good to surrender. It sounds wonderful. I'm happy here. Well, you're right back. I have a good job. A comfortable apartment. Happy? I think you're lonely. Happy? I think you're lonely. That you wake up at night, aching to be led there. I know the feeling. But you don't have to feel that way anymore. You don't seem like someone who's lost their dream. Someone who would sacrifice love on the altar of ambition. I can't even imagine you having a nightmare, let alone. Would you like to live exquisitely, Mr. Collins? Okay, stay right here. Fix your hair again. It's good. It's better before. Before you shift it. Back no, no, don't, don't make it all back. I have it before on the other side for continuity. It's hours ago now, but okay, here we go. Action. I know of a place. What kind of place are you talking about? It's a beautiful place, deep in the woods. A place you are longing for, but almost forgot. A place that fills you with warmth, such an incredible warmth. And a sweet anticipation, like fingertips all over your skin. It feels so good to surrender. It sounds wonderful. But I'm happy here. I, I have a good job. Comfortable apartment. Happy. I think you're lonely. That you wake up at night aching to be led there. I know the feeling. But you don't have to feel alone anymore. Don't seem like someone who's lost their dream. Someone who would sacrifice love on the altar of ambition. Can't even imagine you having a nightmare, let alone. Would you like to live exquisitely, Mr. Collins? This can't be happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to tell you straight. You're dead. 
he's dying. The disease is just so rapid, but there's nothing more we can do. I'm, I'm so sorry. When I was younger, my father always instilled in me to be a man. He was so harsh on me. One day when I was going to school, I was late. And he was so angry. He decided to beat me. He beat me so hard. He beat me bloody. I said, one day if he ever died, I would never cry. But today I cry for my father. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. What do you know? You say, I know, I know. What do you know? You live in your cushy life with your cushy family. With your parents that tell you that they love you every day. My father doesn't love me. Hold on. You hold on a minute. Every day I get dressed and you think I put on this uniform in a brave face? After everything that I've seen, the death that I've seen doing what I do? The children that are dying and their parents have to watch? Do you understand? I know that it's hard for you to believe right now. But I know exactly what you're going through. And you cannot look at me. You cannot do this alone. And I'm here for you. I want to be there for you. You need to trust me. Are you going to let me? Are you going to let me be there for you? Good. Great job, guys. You guys are rap. Excellent. Very, very good. Looks good. No, yeah, it looks you, good. It's very official. Okay. No, yeah. Here we go. Very quiet, please. Everybody pictures up. And action. Excuse me, I need to get through. Ma'am. Stand by for one second. Just one second. Okay. Quiet, please. And action. Excuse me, I need to get through. Ma'am, you cannot pass through here. I'm sorry. This area is off limits. I don't care who you are, but you cannot pass. Take one more time. Really give her that mm -hmm. little pep. Your military get that little pep in their mm. voice like that. Ha! Huh. Here we go. Mm. And action. I, I need to get through. Ma'am, I'm sorry. You cannot pass through here. This area is off limits. I don't care who you are, but you're not getting past me here. I'm just doing my job, ma'am. I try that just one more time. You know, it's a little more in this like to get this space. You're not getting past this point. Super official. Okay. Here this we is. Go. Stand by. This looks really yeah. good on camera. It looks but, super military. Yeah. You just want to have it's good. It's good. It's good casting for you too. Yeah, it's I just you want to get that. Yeah. You're just polite to like to wake mm -hmm. people up, but you know what? Fuck that em. air conditioning doesn't drive them nuts. They're all fast. That's right. Asleep. It's white noise, right? Here mm -hmm. we go. And mm -hmm. excuse me, I need to get through. Ma'am, you're not allowed here. I'm sorry. Time. Excuse me, I need to get through. Ma'am, I'm sorry, you cannot pass by this point. All right, I'm sorry, this area is off limits. <sighs> oh. Pretty much go to the area your voice yeah. is back. Yeah, I'm messing up the lines. There we go. And action. Excuse me, I, I need to get through. I'm sorry, ma'am. This area is off limits. You cannot pass past this point. All right. I'm sorry, ma'am. This area is off limits. You can't. 
Oh my God, I can't speak. What do they really say? say I'm sorry, ma'am, this is an authorized mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I need to get through. I'm sorry, ma'am, this is an unauthorized area. You're not allowed to pass through here. No more authorized area. This is an authorized? Authorized area. Oh, meaning, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need to get through. I'm sorry, ma'am. This is an authorized area. You're not allowed to pass through here. I'm just doing my job. I'm sorry, but you can't get through here. I'm just, I'm just looking for my little sister. She was taken by mistake. She was born here, and she's just six years old. I just need to know where she is. Okay, there's a reason why these safety measures are in place here, ma'am. Okay, I'm just doing my job. I'm giving you a final warning. If you don't leave right now, I'm going to have to call for backup. But she doesn't belong here. She's not supposed to be here. She's six, for God's sakes. She's probably confused. She doesn't know what's happening. How do you sleep at night knowing that you're tearing families apart? What if it was your child locked up for no reason? Okay, do you want to get personal, ma'am? My family's been torn apart by the likes of you. My son got hooked and he OD'd, and you don't want to know why? Because he tried to help a little seemingly innocent looking boy at school with his homework. All you've brought here is de death and destruction. All you've brought here is death. You can be sure that I'm going to spend every living moment of my life getting rid of people like you. I'm sorry that your son died, but that's not my fault. I didn't bring anything here because I was born here. And it sounds like your son will be ashamed of what you were doing. I'm just trying to bring my little sister home. And if you don't let me through, I promise you there's gonna be hell to pay. And I'm gonna start with people like you. Take it again. Ah. <clears throat> Don't hesitate. Don't worry about waking anybody up. Mm. Okay. Don't just get back. You guys were in a really good place mm. in class. You kind of dwindled because we're getting tired. Mm -hmm. Fired up. Mm. Here we go. And action. Excuse me, I need to get through. I'm sorry, ma'am. This place is off limits. You're not allowed to pass through. Excuse me, I need to get through. I'm sorry, ma'am. This place is off limits. You're not allowed to pass through here. Okay, I'm just doing my job and just telling you once you cannot get through this point. I'm just looking for my little sister. She was taken by mistake. She was born here, and she's just six years old, and I just need to know where she's Okay, at. there's a reason why these safety measures are in place. It's to protect the public. Okay, I'm going to tell you one more time, ma'am. I'm in charge here, and you're not getting past me. Do you understand? But she's not supposed to be here. She doesn't belong here. For God's sake, she's six years old. She's probably confused and scared, and she doesn't know what's going on. How do you sleep at night knowing that you're tearing families apart? What if it was your child locked up for no reason? Okay, ma'am, you want to get personal? My family was torn apart by the likes of you and your contribution to our society. Okay, my son OD'd after getting hooked on drugs and you want to know why? Just because he tried to help a little boy at school with his homework. You've only brought death to our country. And now I'm going to be sure to make sure to get rid of all of you. All of you, we understand? I'm sorry that your son died, but that was not my fault. And I didn't bring anything here because I was born here. And your son would be disappointed in what you're doing. Now you're going to let me through. Because if you don't, there's going to be hell to pay. And I'm going to start with people like you. Got it? Back up. Back up! Good, good. Okay, jump in, Max. And then we're going to spin around and grab the other side of you. So I need to have a cat with really low amounts of Feldy one. Right, doesn't... So, hairless cat, little no. freaky one. <laughs> I, have a, I have a Russian blue. There you go. I don't know what that is, but... Here we go. And action. So, what have you been up to? I've been in Europe for like two years. Oh yeah, of course. Um, like, everybody in town's following you. Um, do, do you even speak English still with all the places you've been? No. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, well, are you 
just staying here for the holidays, or are you, you know, just heading back right after, or? Actually, I'm here to stay. I don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. You know, I went to Europe wanting to find myself, start a new life, and the whole time I just wanted to go back where I felt at home, here. Sorry, just, just tell me about you, what's new? <laughs> it's like not much exciting is happening here, but I mean the corporate thing I was doing, it just, it just didn't seem right. And I want to take things in a new direction, uh, so I started my own company. Are you kidding? That's amazing. It's not as glamorous as it sounds. I'm, if anything, uh, you know that new ice cream parlor in town? Uh, they're, they're my client, so they give me a whole bunch of ice cream anytime I'm there, and I can, I can never finish it. So, <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Okay, I can help you finish the ice cream. You hate ice cream. I forced myself to try all the gelato flavors, so it grew on me, okay? I'll help you finish the ice cream. Okay. I'm free Friday after six. I was, I was more thinking Sunday, you know, cause you know, Sunday's Sunday. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also it has to be like right at noon, you know, when the sun is at its zenith. It... <laughs> Are you gonna come or not? Yeah, Sunday, Sunday, how could we do it on any other day? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> up a little max you look like time has gone by and tired has gone in you gotta almost just uh find it in you oh it's God. just trying to be in character i know <laughs> oh you know that was actually working yes <laughs> <laughs> okay what's oh is that a flower on your is that a rose or what type of flower is that i think it's a rose and it's fake AF. Mm, it's not a real rose? It's not a real gold. Oh, so yes. <laughs> so it's going to be black in like two days. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what have you been up to? I've been in Europe for like two years. Oh, yeah, of, of course. I mean, the whole town is following you. So, uh, but the, I mean, do you even still speak English? I mean, after all the places you've been? No. Hakuna Matata. Oh, God. <laughs> well, um, well, what are you doing? Are you, are you just staying here for the holidays, or are, are you coming back right after? Actually, I'm here to stay. I don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. I went to Europe to try and reinvent myself you know, start life over and the whole time I just found myself wanting to go back where I felt at home. Here. Sorry. What about you? Tell me what's new. I mean, there's not much. Um, you know, the work that I had, um, it just didn't, something didn't feel right. So I wanted to take things in a new direction. So I started my own company. Are you kidding? That's amazing. It's not as glamorous as it sounds. I mean, if anything, you know that ice cream parlor that's in town, the new one, they're a client of mine, but so whenever I go inside, they always give me a whole bunch of ice cream and I can never finish it, so mm. it's kind of embarrassing. Don't laugh. I'm sorry. No, I can help you finish the ice cream. You hate ice cream. I forced myself to try all the gelato flavors, so it grew on me, okay? I can help you finish the ice cream. Okay. I'm free Friday after six. I was kind of thinking Sunday, you know, like Sunday on Sunday. And it kind of has to be at like 12 noon, you know, just the sun will be at its zenith, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Hey, are you going to come or not? Yes, yeah, Sunday. How could we do it on any other day? Sunday, Sunday. It's perfect. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good, good. You guys all right. All right, Emily, jump in. Nice, good job. Here we go. And...
action. Excuse me, I need to get through. I'm sorry, ma'am. This place is off limits. You're not allowed through here. It's my job to keep everybody out. I'm just looking for my little sister. She was taken by mistake. She was born here, and she's just six years old. I just need to know where she is. Okay, there's a reason why these safety limits are in place, ma'am. All right, it's to protect the public. So I'm in charge here, and you're not allowed past here. Last warning. But she doesn't belong here. She's not supposed to be here. For God's sake, she's only six years old, and she's probably confused, and she doesn't know what's going on. How do you sleep at night knowing that you're tearing families apart? How would you feel if it was your own child locked up for no reason? Okay, ma'am, would you like to get personal? My family's been torn apart by the likes of you. My son got hooked and OD'd. And you don't want to know why? Just because he tried to help a boy at school with his homework. Now, all you've brought here is destruction. So you can be sure that I'm going to spend every living moment trying to get rid of people like you. I'm sorry that your son died, but that was not my fault. And your son would be ashamed of what you're doing right now. Now I need you to let me through or there's going to be hell to pay. Starting with people like you. Got it? Now just kind of find your way, get yeah, a little bit of a better emotional place going, which is now there's nothing to save it for. Okay. Your makeup. Okay. And action. Excuse me, I need to get through. I'm sorry, ma'am. This place is off limits right now. Nobody can get through. I'm sorry. I'm just looking for my little sister. Um, she was taken by mistake. She was born here. Um, I just need to find out where she's at. Okay, there's a reason why these safety measures are in place, ma'am. It's to protect the public. Now, I'm in charge here, and I'm going to have to call for backup if you don't leave right now. But she doesn't belong here. She's not supposed to be here. For God's sake, she's only six years old. And she's probably confused and scared, and she doesn't know what's going on. How do you sleep at night knowing that you're tearing families apart? What if it was your child locked up for no reason? Okay, ma'am, I'd like to get personal. My family's been torn apart by people like you. My son got hooked and then OD'd because he just tried to help some boy at school with his homework. Okay, I don't care what you have to say, but you people have only brought destruction to my life. So I'm going to spend every last waking moment trying to get rid of you. I'm sorry that your son died, but that's not my fault. Your son will be ashamed of what you're doing right now. Now, I need you to let me through. And if you don't, there's going to be hell to pay, starting with people like you. Got it? Back up. Stay right there. Stay right there. Let's take it off the mic from the back. Just want to check that shot. That was good. That's good. I'm um, making cut off the mic at the end of that. No, no. Okay, good, good. Well, that looks great. That looks great. Good job, guys. Check. All right. Here we go. Don't be messing with our lighting. No, I know. No, 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 he was, he was like turning his oh. phone light on and off. Here we go. And action. Okay, Mark, I need you to level with me. What's going on with you and my boyfriend? I've been noticing some stuff with you guys. I mean, yeah, we hang out every once in a while. Okay, yeah, we hang out too, but I was hanging out with him recently and got a hold of his phone and saw a text message from you that said, thanks for my first time? Yeah, he didn't tell you. Tell me what? So, you know how I'm always bitching to you how I haven't had my cherry popped yet? Uh-huh. And how you've always encouraged me to get it over and done with so that when I do meet Mr. Wright, I'll know exactly what I'm doing. Right, so you're not telling me you've been sleeping with my man, right? So, Max and I were hanging out the other night 
and we were pretty drunk, and he did owe me one for giving him a bunch so of... So you have to sleep with my man? And... Uh, so, so, like, I owe... He, I, he owe... I... Take it from you, I've been sleeping with my man one time. Yeah. And Ashley. So, wait, you have been sleeping with my man? I mean, and he was like... The air conditioning just turned off, so yeah. let's take the whole thing from the top. Yeah, sir, I can, I oh, can, you guys I can deliver it solid. I just was... No, you guys are fine. Plus, there's... I was trying to... I was trying to... I was trying to... Trying to neighborhood re- vehicles now, too. I was trying to remember the, the name. Right. Uh, uh, Monica. Yeah, let's just say Monica. Here we go. Well, don't move your feet, though, guys. Right, I'm not. I'm trying to move. Let's, let's wait for... Uh, Action. Okay, so Mark, I need you to level with me. What's going on with you and my boyfriend? I've been noticing some stuff. I mean, yeah, we hang out every once in a while. Okay, yeah, we've been hanging out too. And we were recently okay, we'll hanging Okay, Mark, I need you to level with me. What's going on with you and my boyfriend? I've been noticing some stuff with you guys. I mean, yeah, we hang out every once in a while. Okay, yeah, we, we hang out too, and we were hanging out recently, and I got a hold of his phone and saw a text message from you saying, thanks for my first time? Yeah, he didn't tell you? Tell me what? So, you know how I'm always bitching that I haven't had my cherry popped yet? Yeah. And how you've always encouraged me to get it over and done with so that when I do meet Mr. Wright, I'll know exactly what I'm doing. All right, so you're not going to tell me you've been sleeping with my boyfriend. So the other night, Mike and I were hanging out, and we were pretty drunk, and he did owe me one for giving him a bunch of rides to work. So what, you have been sleeping with my boyfriend? And so he was like, yeah, I owe you one for giving me a bunch of rides, so you know what, let me help you out with your sexuality. You have been sleeping with my boyfriend. And I mean, like, it was a one-time thing, but, like, he wasn't really into it, so it didn't really count, and he's definitely straight, so you can totally trust him. Wait, did I offend you? Did you offend me? Did you hear what you just said? You just told me. My friend of 10 years just told me you have been screwing my boyfriend. What kind of, when we start doing that to each other, what kind of a friend does that? That is bullshit. You are trash and we're done. Good, take it again from the top. Don't be afraid to get a little volume on it. No, no, no. I gotta say upset at the end. Good, good. Here we go. And action. Okay, Mark, you gotta level with me. What's going on with you and my boyfriend? I've been noticing some stuff. I mean, yeah, we hang out every once in a while. Okay, yeah, we hang out too, and we were hanging out recently, and I got a hold of his phone and saw some text messages from you that said, thank you for my first time. Sorry. Let's take that one again, you're okay. okay. That said, thank you for your, your, my first time? Yeah, he didn't tell you? Tell me what? I mean, you know how I'm always bitching at you that I haven't had my cherry popped yet? Right. And how you've always encouraged me to get it over and done with so that when I do experiment, that I'll know exactly how to please my Mr. Right. Right. You're not telling me you've been sleeping with my boyfriend. And so the other day, Mike and I were hanging out, and we were pretty drunk, and he did owe me for giving him a bunch of rides last week. Wait, you have been sleeping with my boyfriend? And so he was like, yeah, I owe you one, so let me help you out with your sexuality. You have been sleeping with my boyfriend? And I mean, like, it was a one-time thing, and, like, he wasn't really into it, so it didn't really count. And he was definitely straight, so you can totally trust him. Wait, did I upset you? Did you upset me? Did you hear what you just said to me? You're supposed to be my boy of 10 years, and you just told me you've been screwing my boyfriend. Who does that? You are trash, and we are done. 
Good, good. I thought the car punctuated at the end of it. Right? So that was Wasn't good. That, cool? that was good. <laughs> good. We are done. Let me just double check on my car. And action. Okay, Mark, I need you to level with me, okay? What's going on with you and my boyfriend? I've been noticing some things. I mean, yeah, we hang out every once in a while. Okay, yeah, we hang out too, and we were hanging out recently, and I saw his phone, and there was a text message from you saying, thanks for my first time? Yeah, he didn't tell you? Tell me what? So, you know how I'm always bitching that I haven't had my cherry popped yet? Uh, right. And how you always encouraging me to get it over and done with so that when I do meet Mr. Right, I'll know exactly what to do. Right, I know you're not telling me you're busy with my boyfriend. And so the other night, Mike and I were hanging out and we were pretty drunk and he did owe me one for giving him a bunch of rides to work really? last week. You have been sleeping with my boyfriend. And he was like, yeah, I owe you one. So you know what, let me help you out with your sexuality. So you have been sleeping with my boyfriend. And I mean, like, it was a one-time thing, but, like, he wasn't really into it, so it didn't really count. And he's definitely straight, so you can totally trust him. Wait. And I mean, like, he's definitely straight, so you can totally trust him. Wait. Did I upset you? Did you upset me? Did you hear what you just said? My friend of 10 years just told me he's been screwing my boyfriend. What kind of a friend does that to a friend? That's bullshit. You are trash and we are done. Tell you one more time. Don't worry about the air conditioner. I'll fix it later. Alright, here we go. That from and the top? From the top. Okay. Have fun with it. Last take of the night. And action. Okay, Mark, level with me. What's going on with you and my boyfriend? I, I've been noticing some stuff. I mean, yeah, we hang out every once in a while. Okay, yeah, we hang out too. And we were hanging out recently, and I saw his phone, and there were some texts from you saying thanks for my first time. Yeah, he didn't tell you? Tell me what? Take it one more time from the top so that now we get... I take it one more yeah. time for this one again. Okay, here we go. And action. Okay, Mark, I need you to level with me. What's going on with you and my boyfriend? I've been noticing some stuff. I mean, yeah, we hang out every once in a while. Well, yeah, we hang out too, and we were hanging out recently, and I saw his phone, and there were some texts from you saying thanks for my first time. Yeah, he didn't tell you? Tell me what? So, you know how I'm always bitching to you that I haven't had my cherry popped yet? Right. And how you've always encouraged me to get it over and done with so that when I do meet Mr. Right, I'll know exactly what to do. Right. I know you're not telling me you busy with my boyfriend. So the other day, Mike and I were hanging out and we were pretty drunk and he did owe me one for giving him a bunch of rides last week to work. You have been with my boyfriend? And I mean, he was like, yeah, I owe you one. So you know what? Let me help you out with your sexuality. You have been sleeping with my boyfriend. And I mean, like, it was a one-time thing, but, like, he wasn't really into it, so it, it didn't really count. And he's definitely straight, so you can totally trust him. Wait, did I upset you? Did you upset? Are you out of your mind? Did you hear what you just said to me? My friend of 10 years just told me he's been doing my boyfriend. What kind of a friend? Since when we start doing that to each other? Who does that to each other? You are trash, and we are done. Really? Yeah, really. Ass. I, I didn't know. You did not know. We've been friends for 10 years. You thought that would be cool to screw my man? I mean, I, I just wanted to get it over with. And, and you like, can find no other dude to do that with. You just no, to you know mine. how hard it's been, girl. Like, you've been encouraging me, but, like, everyone I go to, like, no one's into it. And so, like, I was, like, ecstatic no when he was, like, sure. And, and, like, the and, he, and, I, and, like I thought you would be happy for me because it's your guy. So, you know what? Like, uh -huh. like, like it, it would be, like, a great thing because, my like. My guy. Yeah, because then it's, like, we could totally have this mutual bonding thing of like your guy helped me find my sexuality and he's straight so then like you know that he's straight i don't believe you're saying this yeah so like you know like i rest assured that like i now i know like what to do and then you know that what? he's straight so you know he's not gonna do anything again oh man we are so done dude we are so done I <laughs> good, good good you're gonna really button it with that last thing where he's trying to 
He's trying to fast talk his way out of it. Like, no, I thought this was awesome. Because now you know. You wouldn't have known. 